Hi, everybody. My name is Tony Ann Marcolini. Welcome to the podcast that may interest you to know. Today, I'm joined by J Jonathan Shelton um, from Buffalo 8. He's the head of post-production there. And I think we're going to get into a lot of filmmaking, and I'm pretty excited to talk to him. So welcome, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you so much. Good to be here, Tony. And uh, let's do it. <laughs> so talk to me about what your job entails. Yeah, so post it is pretty much everything after production. So you, you shoot the film, you go, you know, into production mode and capture all this photography and sound. And then the movie has to be put together. So our um, our work starts after the production has finished and uh, the assembly starts with the editorial team. It's usually an editor and an assistant editor. And they work with the director and sometimes the producers to create the actual picture lock, which will be the, you know, the story as it's envisioned by the filmmakers based on the script and what actually happened in production. As you can imagine, um, often the script is uh, saying one thing and what actually occurs on the shoot because of budgetary constraints or weather or actor availabilities will be something else. And then it's very, you know, it's very important that the editor and the creative team work together to make the best of what was shot. And sometimes that requires, you know, creative outside of the box thinking to get the film to work. So that's uh, really, I'd say the first phase of post is editorial. Some people consider post beginning when you have picture lock, which is what we were just discussing when editorial finishes. But the way we look at it is post is everything after production. So we consider editorial part and parcel with post. We're often managing and hiring and overseeing the editorial team. So we're very involved in the editorial process as, as you know, as a function of Buffalo 8 post. Um, once we have picture lock, it would, you know, the to the layperson, you may think, oh, we now have a movie, but actually that's really just a part of post. What happens at picture lock is we've got to match back from the proxy footage, these smaller resolution proxies that are used typically in editorial and get into the big high four, six, 8K footage. So you can get the most beautiful looking movie of, available, the, uh, of the actual um, you know, photography that was captured on set. And, and so we create what's called a conform and we conform the full resolution movie to the locked editorial cut. And then that conform is sent back to the team to review and approve. And once we establish that we have proper conform, we then send the movie out to the various departments. And so we're looking at color correction, uh, post sound and visual effects, titles. Um, and those are the, you know, and, and music of course is, is happening concurrently with post audio. Um, so these departments now start in earnest uh, when they get their turnover called picture turnover. And you'll see the colorist start working with the director to create and fine tune, refine, perfect the look of the movie. You'll have the sound team do a spotting session with the director to talk about all of the subtleties, nuances of the sonics that want to be portrayed in the film. And this can be everything from footsteps to gunshot sounds to the sound of traffic, you know, you name it, anything that is uh, heard can be discussed and analyzed and brought forward. And we have a full team, a full audio team, people doing such things as Foley footsteps, sound design, background effects, hard effects, and we have various mixers. And it's a very detailed process to get sound to work. Um, and then we That's have- That's pretty interesting. That's like, yeah. uh, for example, you're watching- television and the person is watching television right and you see them you know the tv is supposedly in front of them uh and sometimes you'll hear a little bit of what sounds like what's happening on the tv but in reality there's no sound when they're filming that gets put in later right yeah exactly there's a lot of those elements that are uh, added in post that is part of what we do we're looking at like a television will often be uh, just a black box so there'll be no picture and no sound and then it'll be post job to figure out what images are going to be on that set and what sounds should be emitting from it. And then placing those sounds within the landscape of the, the scene is really critical. Like a television needs to diegetically cohere to the, you know, the frame, the framing. So that's a big part of the mixer is going to work with that television and 
angle it in right just the right way and it's going to feel part of this world that we're creating so yeah that's that's a big piece and that's part of the audio piece and then visual effects um have become a huge paintbrush now as they've become more attainable to independent film um you're looking at things like um how do we make this uh rest of this building look like the rest of the set so we call that a set extension how do we clean up this crew member whose reflection is in the rear view mirror of the car and that's a, a cleanup shot how do we create um you know uh, uh, in in a horror genre how would you create a ghostly atmospheric effect and we have specialists who work in all of these um different ways you know, we have some of the artists who do uh, Game of Thrones dragon renderings, and those are very specific and beautiful. And then we'll have other artists who are just really good at like making sure the film passes QC with those typical kinds of hits that we find, uh, be it crew members on set or a pixel glitch or something along those lines. Um, so, you know, kind of bring this all together. So you have sound, picture, visual effects, all working to get together working on the schedule at the same time the work will then come into our lab and we will put together a final version of the movie for approval which contains fully finished color fully finished sound with all the visual effects and music mixed in titles and um and, and then that that master will then be looked at and considered and finally approved by the creative team that hired us and if it gets an approval, it'll go to a QC house where it will be examined anew. And they'll look at it for little details, defects, sound pops, things that wouldn't be naturally caught by the naked eye. And then we'll do all that fix work as well. And when we have a QC approved master, we begin delivery of the film. And that'll go downstream for all the different formats that we have today. Everything from high, super high resolution, full render 4k master ProRes files to smaller h264 screening files that you would see on vimeo um, and we do all of that work and, and it all it has to be done like clockwork done in a certain order uh through professional processes finally through a, a vetted qc house so you end up with a movie that looks and sounds great and as intended um and, and that, you know, that, that is sort of broad strokes what we're doing day to day at Buffalo 8 Post. Well, um, you know, I say this over and over again, but filmmaking, it's unique um, to, I think, the entertainment genre. Certainly uh, storytelling isn't, right? Storytelling you can tell in a book, right? But an author is just isolated. You know, they're sitting behind their computer and they're pecking away. Uh, and then that script is made, you know, that transcript that, that they've created, that manuscript is perhaps edited and the like. And there's some other hands in, you know, making it as uh, as good as it can be. But it's not quite the same as filmmaking because there's so many hands in the pot of a film, yeah. right? There's th there's that author who uh, who originally creates the script right but they're creating the paper characters right there's the actors who bring the paper characters alive you know with their quirks and the nuances that performers bring to the parts but then there is the director and the you know the, the cinematographer like you know the the visual the visual storyteller who weaves us through how how we see the story or get to absorb the story and then you guys come in right there's all this other stuff in editing that makes it real Right. That yep. puts it together that you feel like you're truly a companion, right, to the protagonist in any story that you're telling, like you're traveling through and it all seems real to you. Yeah, that's right. And right. And, and and, you know, to, to further that idea, and, and you, at the same time, you have this huge bin, business engine across these films all the way through that have to all be in agreement in order for a movie to get made. Um, so it's incredibly you, you need to have a, a sort of consensus approval in a way that you don't for, for any other art form they go an author can go write a book a painter can go paint a musician can play write his own songs but to get a movie made a movie that has some sort of cast and, and a budget involved with it you need uh, to create consensus with people who are concerned and understandably so because it's an expensive endeavor and we all know um, you know, we we all know the old adage that uh, the quickest way to become a millionaire is in the movie business is start as a billionaire. It's like you go you if you don't know what you're doing, you are going to lose money. So it's a uh, it's very uh, I think it's very 
uh, stressful for people and you have to build consensus, just as you're saying. What does the creative process look like for you? Um, so you get a film, uh, which is like a really, and I hate to put it this way, but like a jumbled mess of scenes <laughs> often, right? That they've recorded multiple takes and, um, you know, maybe scenes that don't match exactly, as you were saying earlier, to what's on the script. So you get this like here, here you go. Like yeah. here's, this, here's this jumbled mess of stuff we took. Um, had, you know, what's your creative process to actually visually helping the audience see it? I mean, I know that there's the mechanics of what you were just describing, like, we'll have to do this, we'll have to do that. There's, but you yourself must have like a, a process when you get it, because it's not just mechanical, is it? Yeah. There are times yeah. you're making decisions and you're going, you know, I yeah. see a little of this, you know, and, and, and you're helping to tell yeah. that story. So yeah, what's your usual, process? Yeah, so it's, it's a good question. My usual title on these films is post-production producer. And so I look at post from the lens of producing and, and from that vantage point, it's about hiring the right people and giving them the right amount of tools and, and the right amount of support to hit their marks. So I think my uh, biggest value add is you can spend, you know, whatever your budget is and whatever your schedule is working on a film, but I have a tried and true group of people who I know will get us you know, uh, a high quality movie at the end. And so, you know, we're working from, from that refinement process. It's like, who's going to be the mixer of this? Who is go going to be the composer if we have sway on that? What editor would know how to cut through this kind of story? And just having that kind of expert thinking across the hiring of the personnel, I think is probably, you know, the, the, the most creative element of post is picking the right team and then making sure they're inspired and they have the tools to, to do the work. Um, so yeah, yeah that, that's a big piece. I mean, there are times where you could look at post as an actual evolution of a movie that's just gone way off the rails and you're, you're figuring out actually what is story in this sort of mess of a movie. But, but uh, th that's the exception. Like that is not really the job of post is not to salvage movies you know, whole stock. We're we're really coming in to find the best version of what was intended um, when the director and the team went out and shot this thing. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's an amazing task, right? It. To, I mean, because you are, you are undertaking everybody else's vision up until that point. Right. You, I mean, because the, the screenwriters complain. You, know, I've heard things like, "Well, they complain that it doesn't turn out." maybe as they envisioned it when they were writing it, uh, right? It's more the director's vision. But then when you get it, it's got to be a little more your vision too, because you are left with this collection of material. Uh, and I think making that material look as smooth as it does when we watch a movie is uh, is, is quite the amazing task. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, what, a, it's which, a really good point. It's those are the those are the key things. Just like in music, you'll have a mixer who can come in and take someone's recorded song idea and just bring it to life. We have the same kind of tools to bear on in the film business where we're taking a lot of moments that have been captured and the threads of a story. And then in post, these things are really those decisions are being finalized. And in some ways, we're finding the movies. Like there are films where movies are fully realized in post and, and the and the destiny of the film is discovered in that process. And that, that's really, yeah. cool. I love that one, when we're able to like bring out something that maybe wouldn't have happened without our team. Sure. I mean, and it's important work. I mean, I've said it before, you know, you can't undervalue uh, entertainment because you find your audience where they are. I say this over and over. People are going through rough moments in their life and they, you know, and they find that bit of escapism uh, through, you know, hitting the pause button and just sitting with your film yeah. or, or picking up a book, you know, where they can get lost in another story yeah. uh, and and it helps them escape. And there is true value to, yeah. to that in society. So, I mean, I, I think you can't place enough value on it to, to what it does offer. Um, mm -hmm. So it, in its own way, this is important work because if, you know, when you're watching something that's not well done, it loses something, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, 
if you think, I mean, without getting too philosophical, if you just think about what is culture itself, it's a collection of stories that are handed, you know, generationally, and it tells us of where we came and what our priorities are, what our tastes are, what we take stock in, what, what means a lot to us. So the, the movie business is being sort of like the, the, the apex of, you know, where our creatives head is such an important, um, it's such an important stream of thinking that needs to be valued. And um, it's great. We have these film festivals and that we have uh, a really, you know, robust independent film community like that, that world serves more than just propelling the next movie star or the next big director. They're, they're giving the voice of storytelling to the, the you know, the, the people that are coming up. So I, I believe in it. I think it's critical, and I do think it's a, a big part of culture. Movies, for sure, are are um, they're more than just you know commercial product. It, they they mean a lot more to more people. Certainly, people that I'm talking to or the people at our company, movies have been part of their memory scape when they're referencing yeah. childhood. They're thinking of the movies they saw and times they shared those films with friends or maybe had a different point of view brought to them by the film itself. So yeah, I think. It's really important. Agreed. I mean, it, it definitely helps um, culture grow, right? It, it definitely helps hit home for some people concepts and things that maybe they wouldn't have previously understood or had any empathy for somebody. And then they go on this two-hour journey, uh, right? And at the end, they maybe they feel a little bit different. Maybe the, the needle has been moved a little bit on a concept. So I, I agree. And there are universal truths that get told over and over again. Isn't that true, right? I mean, Shakespeare, <laughs> Shakespeare has been telling Romeo and Juliet, you know, for the last few hundred years in different forms and different cultures and different ways, right? So I, I love that, that there are things that connect us to to those who inhabited the, the planet, you know, 300 years ago and, and today, 300 years ago, people loved their kids. People got jealous, yeah. uh, right? There was competition, Right, in whatever form, whatever's going on in society, um, that makes that drives that narrative. It's still those concepts are true; they're universally true. And I and I really like that that gets kind of captured, you know, with film. Uh, wow. What's your What's your favorite film so far you've done that you've worked on? You know, that's a tough call because I've I, I I've they're worked- all your babies. I've worked on so many good films. Like I've been fortunate to be able to work with some great films. Um, so I would, I, I would, I couldn't really pick one where I'd say like this is the, you know, the the film. But there's certainly been, um, I mean, I think of some stands standouts like the Fallout. Mega Parks film is excellent, and we really had a hand in helping that film come to life. Um, you know, we did. Um, um, uh, we just did uh, the film that won um, South by Southwest, the grand jury prize. Uh, Bob Trevino likes it, which is a really interesting and, and I think important film in a lot of ways. Yeah. You're getting a lot of buzz on that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really good one. Um, so those two come to mind, but then I also am really proud of some of our more, um, you know, straightforward uh, actioners that just need to be done well. Like we did this Travolta film recently, um, Cash Out, which turned out a re- really, it was really fun. I'm a- I haven't seen that. Yeah, it's just it just came. Uh, I think just recently came out, um, so that's a cool film. And then um, we're doing um, the, the the next Polish brothers film, There There, which will be a really interesting film where one brother is shooting an hour of the film and the other brother is shooting the other hour of the film, and they don't know each other's stories, and yeah. then we're gonna bring it together in post, and it'll be you know an original amalgamation of two filmmakers point of views from brothers making sort of um this this movie that in a way that's never been made before so i think that'll be a fun one to watch yeah very uh, artistic it sounds like yeah yeah that's going to be a unique one of a kind for sure so do you ever get to the set when these things are being filmed or never yeah sometimes i do De- it depends on the location often we're shooting in tax incentive states for the finance plan so you know, that will, uh, usually I'm here and making sure the films in town are being managed well that are in post. So, but if, if there's a shoot in LA or if I'm traveling, it's always nice to pop by. Um, but no, we not- got a lot of new incentives in New Jersey, right? You, sh- you, sh- you guys should aim towards yeah. uh, maybe filming here. 
Yeah, we'd love to shoot more in New Jersey. Like that's a that that's a beautiful spot. It's sort of Pennsylvania, New Jersey have all that greenery and and um you know, you see these states that get used a lot that you get the same looks after a while. I think New Jersey would be nice, refreshing look for sure. Sure. And they just put all these incentives in, in place here, I think, to do filming and uh Netflix Netflix is building a studio or uh, something nearby. So yeah, keep 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 us on your radar. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, so do you travel much for your work then? You know, the post house is in Hollywood. So the work is getting done in, in Hollywood. It's right. At, we are, our buildings on sunset. So I'm mostly stationary for, um, for, for the post oversight. It, it makes more sense to be here and we have mixed rooms and color correction rooms and, um, uh, you know, a team of engineers doing this work. So we're managing locally, but that said, you know, there's there's always some travel involved in the film business. So I'm sure I'm sure something will take me out in this year for, for you know for some reason or another. Tell me, do you have a moment, any one moment where you're either uh on set watching something or you know, you're you're sitting in, you know, behind this the screen editing, you know, behind a desk editing. Do you ever have what's your what's the one moment you remember? thinking wow like i can't believe like this is my job like i can't believe i'm in this moment that you're because you were so like kind of overwhelmed by the 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 magnificence of the moment yeah i think it was probably i remember producing this film with the polish brothers called stay cool and it had a really interesting cast winona Ryder, hillary duff chevy chase and it was just um, a film that had come together uh, with a lot. It was like a film that we really had to put together independently. And I was on set in a moment there and I just was looking at, out at the cast involved and looking at the filmmakers. And it was just a moment of feeling like this was something real was happening here. It wasn't just, um, you know, it wasn't just a fever dream. You were part of something that, um, was happening with you know in a notable way and, and it was a film i was excited about so that was that was nice and then that film premiered at tribeca and uh and it was it was great to see it from you know from screen to to release it was cool yeah i'll bet that's it you know with chevy chase like an icon too <laughs> yeah he came into the interview and he was, he was playing this uh principal and he was like i like the part i want to do it i just have one note I want to be able to put a Band-Aid on my face that just sort of randomly moves around throughout, the, you know, the shoot. And uh, the filmmakers were, the brothers were like, okay, that sounds great, Chevy. And that was it. He was cast. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Was, yeah, those are great stories, right? That you probably have from every film you've done. You know, that somebody's got, uh, I think meeting certainly so celebrities that we go decades, you know, watching uh, watching them evolve uh, and feeling like we know them, even though we don't, right? But feeling that way because of watching them perform, I think to get the opportunity to creatively, you know, work with that person at some point in your career has to be pretty amazing. It, yeah, for sure. Um, I can say this. I have a film out right now called Immediate Family, which is on Hulu. If any of your viewers are interested, I, I produced it with... Um, with Greg Richling, who I have a company with, and and Jack Pyatt, and the director is Denny Tedesco, who did the Wrecking Crew. Cool. And, yeah, and uh, it's a it's a film about musicians who you know created the singer songwriter sound. So it takes you into the early seventies and that group of California players who did all that work. And this is the the stuff like uh, Car um, like, um, James Taylor, Jackson Brown, yeah. uh, Linda Ronstadt. Carol King, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, nice. Yeah. And it's, it's, and we, all these, uh, you know, rock luminaries came on camera to discuss how much these musicians meant to them. And th that was particularly satisfying to, to me to, to be able to make a film, having a great love for music and having played music for a long time, to be able to put these, these musicians in a spotlight, be part of that. And it was, uh, yeah, it's out now. So that was, that's really cool. And uh, and I have a contract with a 
Don Henley uh, signed his release and I got to sign my name right next to his. And that was probably the coolest part of that. Like just to see Don's signature, I was like, wow, this is super cool. <laughs> right. You're taking a picture of that. It's on your phone, right? It's your new screensaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, that was cool. So I, was, I was just a big Eagles fan. So it was, it was neat. Well, you have, you have some projects coming up that you're excited about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have, um, we have the story of Tom Wilson that we're putting together. He's a African-American music producer mm -hmm. with uh, Bob Dylan and Frank Zappa. So we've been working on, on developing that script for a while. That one's coming together really nicely. Um, I have sort of a bigger uh, budgeted action movie that um, we're excited about too, which is uh, based off of a true story about this um, bad cop who gets extradited and, he escapes to New Zealand, so that that'll be a fun fun film we're starting to look at. And then we've got so much move, so much work in the post company where it's just this nonstop. Um, you know, between Buffalo Eight and Bond, it, it's just been a nonstop uh, pipeline of of uh, films that keep we keep working on. So it's been yeah, it's been really good, really busy time. Yeah, your company, I hear great things. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the fa very fast growing. I mean, you guys are really kind of taking the industry by storm. Yeah, it's it. Well, so so Matthew Helderman and Luke Taylor, the, the CEO and the COO, and they're just, they just have like a, a very smart way of maneuvering and growing in this tough industry. So their management is extremely good. And, and I think we're all fortunate to have leadership at that level. It's through, it's, it's been really positive for all of us. Well, I hope you'll keep coming back and talking to me. I know yeah. this half hour will fly really fast, but I, I hope you'll keep coming back and talking to me as you're making new projects. I'd love to get into this. Yeah, um, for sure. Stay in touch and uh, I'd love it. It'd be great, Tony. And, like, and what's, your, what's your favorite film? I didn't get a chance to ask you that. Of all time, probably. Yeah, you know, if you're taking something on the desert island, what's it going to be? What it's going to be? It's going to be, uh, I have probably two. I love The American President. Oh, yeah. With Annette Bening and uh, and uh, Michael Douglas, uh, I loved Sabrina, uh, the yeah. remake though. Actually, not the Humphrey Bogart one, which may make me unique, but I like the remake with Harrison Ford, uh, my cousin Vinny, uh, yeah. another classic. You can't go wrong with my cousin Vinny. So that's good. And, that's a very like nice dichotomy for sure. Yeah, and then while you were sleeping with Sandra Bullock, one of her early ones, but I just find something just something so pure and and yeah. kind about that movie that I really like. Nice. Well, that's a good list. I think I I think I've seen those all, but I probably could do a refresher on while you were sleeping. So maybe take a look at that. Yeah, it's it's just a kind movie, right? It's just a reminder that we take for granted family sometimes, and then. It's like a, a somewhat of a slap in the face reminder, like don't take that, don't take family for granted because there are people who don't have anybody, right? right? There's a sweetness to it and that she's alone in the world. And then she finds these this family like that, that she winds up becoming a part of and she truly appreciates them, uh, which I think is a great, again, that's a great message to send to people who have oh. family who they're complaining about maybe all the time for whatever issue, but then yeah. I realize there are people who wish they had a family to complain about. And I, and I like the message there. Okay. That sounds interesting. I'll check it out. And again, as you're making new films, come back and talk to me about them. And we can, uh, even if there's one in particular that you're excited about, I'd love to like kind of chop it up and talk about great moments, you know, from it together. Yeah. That's fun. So, yeah next time we have like a, uh... And we could even do something on immediate family because we're doing a Grammy um, push for that right now. Oh, um, cool. Music film, yeah. And, and I could probably even get the director on. So if you want a sidebar on that, we'd love it. It'd be great. Yeah, I'll be in touch then with your assistant and we'll set it up. Okay, great. Sounds perfect. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, Tony. You as well. Talk to you later. Bye. Well, on that note, I'm going to close the podcast out and say uh, have a great day, everybody. And thank you to my guest. Bye, Jonathan. Bye, everyone. 